I'm really excited about getting sketch notes. So in case, just in case I'm getting sketch note, I want to make sure that there's something memorable on it. So hello, my name is Lars. Um, I work for Adobe, um, but still, um, this is a lightning talk, so I'm going to hurry up and be really quick. I work for Adobe, um, for Adobe I.O. specifically, which is just like Adobe, just for developers. Um, these opinions are all my own, so I don't represent. Yeah, if you need to no. take an extra few minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> these opinions are my own. Um, these ideas are definitely not. Everything in this talk, talk is stolen from somebody else. So let's get started. Putting the F in FAS. And you might say, okay, WTF, what exactly does F mean? And well, we all know this, right? F is for functions. And um, the way I see the world is there are really two, only two ways of programming. You either program functional or dysfunctional. And in functions as a service, um, we have a couple of properties that we know um, that functions are, right? They're stateless, they're short-lived, they're single purpose. And most of all, you've heard all of this. This is boring, right? We have actually bigger fish to fry than just to repeat the basics of functions. Um, we want to become enterprise architects. So this is the real title of my talk. Um, fu functional patterns for enterprise architects. And when it comes to architecture, there are really just two fundamental patterns, either functional or dysfunctional. So um, let's take a quick look and let's take a step back to what are these patterns and where can we learn. And the first person to learn from is um, actually Paul's new boss. And um, Tim Allen Wagner, who um, is leading um, the Lambda business at, um, at Amazon, he brought up this serverless manifesto. And this is a really long thing, like every manifesto. So I only skimmed it, but there were a couple of interesting things in here. Right? Number one, functions are the unit of deployment and scaling. Functions. And number two, blah, 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 never pay for idle. Never pay for people or software that is not doing anything. So all of that makes a lot of sense. Um, and um, Yotre from Microsoft, he actually came with a list of applied serverless design patterns, like function chaining, async HTTP, fan out, fan in, blah, blah, blah. And um, I think this is, this is really great that we have these that we have these functions. But the question that I had, is this list complete? Are there more functions? Is there a systematic way to look at this? And then I heard another talk by um, Ben Keho, who is working for Roomba and probably one of the most active users of serverless. And he said, you know what? As great as Node.js might be, and I think Node.js is great, is it is not the right platform for serverless. And I was thinking, oh my god, Node.js is not right for serverless? What should I do? And the reason for this is Node.js is simply forcing you to handle, um, handle um, asynchronous programming in, a, in the wrong way. Right? Whenever you're calling another service, whenever you're calling another function, you have to wait and you have to pay for idle, which is a violation of Tim's rule. So, Whenever I have a hard software engineering challenge, I think, okay, where is an idea that I can steal from? And um, I have a preferred place of stealing stuff from, which is, according to Greenspan's 10th um, rule, if you can't read it, every, every sufficiently complicated C or Fortran, and this now also includes Node.js programs, um, contains an ad hoc, informally specified, bug-ridden, slow implementation of half of common Lisp. So the short summary is Lisp did it first, and the real title of my talk, and I know this would have never got accepted, is what Lisp can teach you about serverless patterns. And when I say Lisp, I actually mean closure. I do love closure, but that's all closure. <laughs> but that's all I'm going to say for now, 
Um, and I'm not going to show you a lot of, well, that's a lie. I'm going to show you some closure code. Um, specifically, I'm going to show you a couple of functions in closure that you can steal and that you can use as serverless patterns. And the first one is the map function. The map function takes a list of data, applies another function in every piece, and then um, gives you the result or gives, gives you back another list, which is the result of this. This is what in the serverless world we would call a fan out, and this helps you to process a lot of data. We have the apply function, which is, um, which is taking which is taking a function, taking a bit of data, and then running the function with that data, which is um, great to create a wrapper or to create a proxy. We have the comp functions, which is taking two functions and creating a new function out of it, which is um, essentially a great way of calling multiple services in order. Then we have the reduce function, which is taking a list of data, calling a function repeatedly on every item of that data, and then giving you the result back, which is essentially a fan in. Then we have the fold function, and I'm calling this pattern, this is the fan in with the cherry on top, because it can do really, really awesome stuff like processing every single item, then combining multiple pieces, and then combining it again. Um, it's really, really powerful if you're dealing with lots and lots and lots of data. Then there's iterate. I really love iterate, because it essentially creates, um, takes a function and turns this function into an endless data stream. Right? It's creating a data generator for you. Then we have Juxt. And Juxt is taking two functions and executing them um, in, in parallel. So you can combine the results of multiple function calls in one single call. And whenever you do all this, there's one thing that you really want to do. Um, you want to increase performance. And this is what Clojure calls memoize. And this is what we call the good old caching. And Finally, then we have the partial function, and I really like partial because partial is taking an existing function and calling it with the preset value. So you can take a very, very powerful and very, very flexible function and turn it into something very, very specific and safe and, um, and tailor-made. And this is all I have to show for you, so that's all the F you need. And um, looking at the clock, do we have time for questions? Yes, we do have time for questions. Oh, I see there's a question. Can my serverless vendor do this? And the answer is probably. So the pieces that you need, right? You need, um, you need a function as a service system. This is something that everyone has. Then you need some kind of event passing system. This is either, either something that your serverless provider already has or um, that where, something where you can use things like the serverless framework. And finally, you need a document database with triggers. In case of um, things like AWS or Azure or um, Apache OpenWhisk, all of this is coming out of the box and you can implement all of these patterns yourself. Thank you very much.